Directional control valves are used to start, stop, and change the direction of flow in a hydraulic circuit. Although they may be designed as rotary or poppet style, the spool type directional control is the most common. This design consists of a body with internal passages that are connected or sealed by a sliding spool along the land of the valve. Directional spool valves are sealed along the clearance between the moving spool land and the housing. The degree of sealing depends on the clearance, the viscosity of the fluid, and the pressure. Because of this slight leakage, spool type directional valves cannot alone hydraulically lock the actuator. Directional control valves are primarily designated by their number of possible positions, port connections or ways, and how they are actuated or energized. For example, the number of porting connections are designated as ways or possible flow paths. A four-way valve would have four ports, P, T, A, and B. A three-position valve is indicated by three connected boxes. There are many ways of actuating or shifting the valve. They are push button, hand lever, foot pedal, mechanical, hydraulic pilot, air pilot, solenoid, and spring. Directional control valves may also be designated as normally open or normally closed. These designations would accompany two position valves such as the following. Spring offset, solenoid operated, two-way valve, normally closed. Spring offset, solenoid operated, two-way valve, normally open. Spring offset, solenoid operated, three-way valve, normally closed. Spring offset, solenoid operated, three-way valve, normally open. The spool type directional control valves in industrial applications are subplate or manifold mounted. The porting system is industry standard and designed by valve size. Directional control valve sizing is according to flow capacity which is critical to the proper function of the valve. Flow capacity of a valve is determined by the port sizes and the pressure drop across the valve. This mounting pattern and size is designated as a DO2 nominal flow 5 gallon per minute DO3 nominal flow, 10 gallon per minute, DO5 nominal flow, 20 gallon per minute, DO5H nominal flow, 25 gallon per minute, DO7 nominal flow, 30 gallon per minute, DO8 nominal flow, 60 gallon per minute, D10 nominal flow, 100 gallon per minute. A direct acting directional control valve may be either manual or solenoid actuated. Direct acting indicates that some method of force is applied directly to the spool, causing the spool to shift. In our illustration, energizing the solenoid or coil creates an electromagnetic force, which wants to pull the armature into the magnetic field. As this occurs, the connected push pin moves the spool in the same direction, while compressing the return spring. As the spool valve shifts, port P opens to port A, and port B opens to port T or tank. This allows the cylinder to extend. When the coil is de-energized, the return springs move the spool back to its center position. Watch the whole animation uninterrupted. For control of systems requiring high flows, usually over 35 gallons per minute, pilot-operated directional control valves must be used due to the higher force required to shift the spool. The top valve, called the pilot valve, is used to hydraulically shift the bottom valve or the main valve. To accomplish this, oil is directed from either an internal or an external source to the pilot valve. When we energize the pilot valve, oil is directed to one side of the main spool. This will shift the spool, opening our pressure port to the work port and directing return fluid back to the tank. It is often required to externally pilot or send fluid to the pilot valve from an external source. The advantages to external piloting are constant pressure supply regardless of other influences in the main system and the source may be filtered separately to prevent silting of the pilot valve. In addition to externally piloting, we may also externally or internally drain the valve. 
If the pilot valve is internally drained, oil flows directly into the tank port of the main valve. Pressure or flow surges occurring in the tank port when operating the main control spool may affect the unloaded side of the main spool, as well as the pilot valve. To avoid this, we may externally drain the pilot valve by feeding pilot oil flow back to the tank. Pilot-operated directional control valves may be field changed from internal to external pilot and drain. We can categorize most hydraulic circuits into two basic types, open center or closed center. The directional control valve actually designates the type of circuit. Open center circuits are defined as circuits which route pump flow back to the reservoir through the directional control valve during neutral or dwell time. This type of circuit typically uses a fixed volume pump, such as a gear pump. If flow were to be blocked in neutral or when the directional control valve is centered, it would force flow over the relief valve. This could possibly create an excessive amount of heat and would be an incorrect design. A closed center circuit blocks pump flow at the directional control valve, in neutral or when centered. We must utilize a pressure compensated pump such as a piston pump which will de-stroke. A three position directional control valve incorporates a neutral or center position which designates the circuit as open or closed depending on the interconnection of the P and T ports and designates the type of work application depending on the configuration of the A and B ports. The four most common types of three position valves are open type, closed type, float type, and tandem type. This open type configuration connects P, T, A and B together, giving us an open center and work ports that drain to the tank. This configuration is often used in motor circuits to allow freewheeling in neutral. This closed type configuration blocks P, T, A and B in neutral, giving us a closed center. This center type is common in parallel circuits where we want to stop and hold a load in mid-cycle. This float type configuration blocks P while interconnecting A and B ports to T. Because P is blocked, the circuit becomes closed center. This center type is commonly used in parallel circuits where we are freewheeling a hydraulic motor in neutral. This tandem type configuration connects P to T while blocking work ports A and B. With P and T connected, we have an open center circuit. This center type is used in connection with a fixed displacement pump. Because A and B are blocked, the load can be held in neutral. When specifying a directional control valve type, one must consider the type of circuit required and the work application. In an open circuit, hydraulic fluid supplied to the pump inlet comes from the reservoir and is returned from the actuator back to the reservoir. In most open circuits, hydraulic fluid is fed to the actuator by a directional control valve and returned to the reservoir in the same way. This first circuit is a basic system with a hydraulic pump and a hydraulic motor. When the pump is in operation, flow is directed to the hydraulic motor, causing the motor to rotate. If the pump is not rotating, the hydraulic motor will not turn. In this circuit, a directional control valve is added to the circuit and a bi-directional hydraulic motor replaces the hydraulic motor. The directional control valve will allow the hydraulic motor to reverse direction when shifted. This circuit adds an adjustable flow control valve and a pressure relief valve. The flow control valve allows for variable output speeds from the hydraulic motor. The pressure relief valve protects the system from overpressurization and will shift as the system pressure increases due to flow restriction in the flow control valve. In this circuit, a variable pump has replaced the fixed pump. The flow control valve is removed, an open center directional control valve is added, and a filter and heat exchanger are added to the return line. The directional control valve, 
allows for forward or reverse direction of the motor and freewheeling of the hydraulic motor when the valve is centered. The filter and heat exchanger will condition the fluid before a closed circuit normally means the hydraulic fluid is returned from the prime mover directly back to the inlet of the pump. In most closed circuits, the continuous leakage from the pump and motor is replenished by an auxiliary pump. This first circuit is a basic system with a bidirectional variable displacement piston pump and a bidirectional hydraulic motor. When the pump is on, stroke flow is directed to the hydraulic motor giving it rotation. Rotation of the hydraulic motor is reversed when the piston pump swash plate goes over center. Controlling the output speed from the hydraulic motor is achieved by varying the output flow from the variable piston pump. If the pump is not rotating or is off stroke, the hydraulic motor will not turn. In this circuit, two pressure relief valves are added to protect the system from overpressurization. When the hydraulic motor rotation is restricted or stopped, the high pressure relief valve opens and protects the system from overpressurization. This circuit adds a small tank to hold the leakage from the pump and hydraulic motor. This leakage must be replenished to the closed circuit. In the last circuit, a fixed pump is added with a filter in the suction line, two spring check valves and a charge pressure relief valve are added, and a heat exchanger is added to the leakage line from the pump and hydraulic motor. The fixed pump replenishes the hydraulic fluid that is lost from internal leakage from the pump and motor through the spring check valve into the low boost pressure line. The other check valve keeps the high system pressure isolated from the low boost pressure. When the auxiliary pump has replenished the low boost side, pressure builds slightly, opening the charge pressure relief valve. The charge pressure relief valve opens and fluid is directed back to the tank. The charge pressure relief valve maintains a constant pressure in the low boot pressure line, which charges the pump. When the hydraulic motor rotation is restricted or stopped, the high pressure relief valve opens and protects the system from overpressurization.